Hello, this is Jorge Pedret, and today I'm going to show you. Uh, I've been showing the Alchemist Tetrahedron, which is this shape with four different faces and four different corners. In each corner, it has a color, a different element. I call them elements, so we'll be working with four different elements. So there is a, we have red, yellow, green, and blue. And in the i was showing this today and there were some people asking like how do you use it what is it for so i'm making this video to tell you like uh, uh, a uh, bit about how it works so the first thing is that it, it's a map it has a few functionalities but it, it is a map and it's up to you what a map of it is if you have worked for example with the medicine wheel from the indigenous people uh, from different places in the world, you can kind of use it as a as a map of, of for the medicine wheel, where you have, for example, in the north you have the the yellow, the air, then the fire on the east. Then it will be a little bit different. It will be something like that. Anyways, with the tetrahedron, with this tetrahedron, you can find any combination, which is what I'm doing right now, and the combination that I'm usually that I've seen most often, it goes something like this. No, not like this, like this. Yes. So on the north, you have uh, air. On the east, you have fire. Then on the south, you have water. And on the west, you have earth. In this case, it will be green. So what I just did was I found the, the right combination of uh, what is the order that the medicine wheel that I am accustomed to, which maybe it's the North American medicine wheel uh, from the indigenous people of North America. So it's like the North, uh, West, South and East, uh, uh, air, uh, fire, water, earth and air. Uh, so it's an elemental, you can assign each color to an element and then you can create the transmutations, for example, between air and fire, what, what is created between those, like hot air, for example. And then you can also see like between water and uh, between water and fire, you get what's in the middle is steam, for example. And when you combine uh, water with earth, you get in the middle is something like mud. So just like this, uh, an alchemist can combine all of this. For example, if you combine these three, uh, so it will be uh, red, green, and yellow. So uh, actually it will be like that. Uh -huh. So red, fire, water, blue, and then earth, green. When you combine the three of them, you get something like you get mud from combining this earth and water and then with the fire you get something like clay so this is a way that an alchemist can can use these different models to to alchemize different elements the other way that i that i've been using it is as a, a feelings map so this is a map of your feelings essentially if your heart center is the center of your feelings uh, then this will be like a map of your heart so in each corner it will be uh, a primary feeling in the maps that I work with in, in my culture, in my lineage, we work with four different feelings, four different primary feelings, which is joy in the yellow one, anger in the red one, fear in the green one, and then sadness in the blue one. So it's like anger, sadness, fear, and joy. Anger, sadness, fear, and joy, just like that. And uh, so each one of these represents one of those. And the same as the elements, when you combine, for example, one of the most popular ones is combining anger with sadness. When you combine these two feelings, you get the thing in the middle, which is anger and sadness. So this represents as depression. When you feel depression is when you're mixing anger and sadness. So this alchemist tetrahedron can let you know where, where in the map you are. The other thing, other varieties that you can use this is for the archetypal archetypal lineages, where each one of these is an archetypal lineage. For example, it can be the, the king, the warrior, the lover, and the wizard for the men. Or it can be the, the queen, the warrioress, 
the witch and the and the lover in, in each corner and you can this can be a, a thing to tell you what you re, what you connect more with and this will be the in-betweens will be like how they collaborate for example how does the wizard collaborate with the lover and that's this representation here this is why it's an alchemist tetrahedron because you can alchemize different elements it can also there is an, another map in possibility management what is called the four brains which is i think is the, exactly these colors and it, i'm not so familiar with that map but you can also use this for uh the for the creating a map of the brains and also for the five bodies map where each one of these is one map for example the green one will be the physical body then the intellectual body then the emotional body and ultimately the energetic body and the fifth body which is the archetypal body will be going in in the very center where the, where all of them connect right so for the archetypal body to to be connected to be activated you need those four which is like right in the middle of the tetrahedron that's where that's where they connect uh, okay the other so i show you that how you can be using it as a map now there is another functionality for this which is more a bit more dynamic that you can use it as a as a game it can be a game dice and i i will show you here on the table where i am so you can uh, shake it like a dice and then throw it and then the element that lands at the top right now we have the the yellow that landed at the top so that will be the element that is selected in this case it will, will be the element that you play with uh, there is, so you can play games like conscious theater where each player they get to roll the dice and they do and then whatever element they get at the top they get to uh, make conscious theater with that feeling for example that one is anger so i will go ah, i'm so fucking angry about this pen that is here is open and i'm not using it and the the ink is going to dry and whatever it can be whatever that was just a, a small example and you can set up a time like you have to do it for for 30 seconds or something like that you can also use this for archetypal theater uh, for example, when, if you're playing a role-playing game and you want each player that is person, each person that is playing to roll the dice and see what character they get, they can roll it and they will get, for example, they get the warrior. Then the other person rolls it and they get another warrior. And then the other person rolls it and they get another warrior. And then the next person rolls it and they get a lover. So three warriors and one lover. And then you go into a party uh, or whatever the archetypal theater is. And the, the last thing that I want to tell you about uh, is that this can also be used as an energetic tool. Once you have it in your hands and once you are familiarized with it, you're, you have a map of this inside of you in your inner structure. So you, you have the physical item, but you also have it in, in you, right? So as, a, as an energetic tool, you can use this for different ways, for different things. Uh, one of them is to focus your attention. For example, when you're doing feelings work, it's very common that that you uh, that you want to focus only on one element. You don't want to work with all of the elements all at once, especially at the beginning when you are just getting to feel what each el what each feeling feels like. Uh, so when you're holding it like this, energetically, the dice. The, the other elements, they are at the base, uh, in a way supporting the, the element that is at the top to be at the top. So when you're doing rage work, it, the, energetically the dice will be positioned in this way, where the, your joy, your sadness and your fear are at the bottom, supporting the role of your anger to be there uh, fully expressed uh, purely. Same when you're doing work with your sadness, when you're looking uh, to work purely with your sadness on mix with the other feelings, then you all the other feelings are your joy, your anger, and your and your fear. They're at the bottom, supporting the sadness to be up there. And I I've been experimenting with this, and it, it really creates like energetically this sense of support from the other feelings to be down there, so that the feeling that you're working with uh, stays at the top. And uh, the other purpose as an energetic tool you can use is to unmix emotions 
For example, you can identify that you are mixing anger and sadness. So you can uh, energetically hold it like this and, and, and understand that the dice is in a way in this shape that is, um, that is not pointing up or pointing down, but that is in this shape and that there is a, a, a consequence, a creation. There is a collaboration between two feelings that is happening that needs to be resolved uh, for the uh, the problem with a mixed emotion, for example, is that it, it gets the dice stuck like this and it doesn't allow it to move dynamically. So in a way, like your heart, your map will be like stuck in there and is when you get depressed for days and days or for months. And then this, this dice will help you diagnose yourself and, and actually help you unmix the emotions and see like, is it just anger and sadness or is there like also fear in there so you get to see what what emotions are are there at play and work with them if you know about the unmixing process then you can you can ask me there is an energetic process where you unmix your feelings using your anger to unmix it so you can uh, get to see each one of the elements individually and the last energetic way that you can use it as an energetic tool is for getting your X in the map. This is very, very important and this is why it works to me like a compass. Um, so you can see where your X in the map is in your feelings, just like the way that I was describing it just before, uh, by seeing uh, where is the, uh, like if you're mixing, if you're, if you're feeling angry and sadness and scared all at the same time, and uh, then you're likely, your X in the map is that you're mixing your emotions. And those are the emotions that you're mixing. So your X in the map will be somewhere there. Uh, and in your heart center, it will be something like that, like the, the joy pointing down. And if you're trying to see where, where in your body you are, you can also do this with your bodies. Are you more in your physical body? Are you more in your mind, mind body, in your emotional body, in your energetic body? And then you can identify with this. Same with the archetypal lineage. This can paint the, the X in the maps for your archetypal lineage. So this is the, the, the functionalities that I've discovered for this. I am curious to know what uh, other people discover about this and what other functionalities or games and uses you find for this. So if you have any ideas that come up for you, please uh, share them with me. I love to know. And if you want to get one of these for yourself. I got this one 3D printed by a friend who is a product designer, a material designer. I'm not sure what his name was. He designed this for me and he printed it from a PLA, which is a material made with corn husk, recycled corn husk. So it means that this is all plant-based. Uh, he told me that there is no plastic in it. It's just plant-based material and it's actually sustainably, sustainably harvested. And if you, uh, yeah, if you want to get one of these, I have the, the, the drawings that I can send your way. And, and also, yeah, you can ask me questions about it. So thank you for watching. This is the Alchemist Tetrahedron. My name is Jorge Pedret, and thank you for watching. And until the next time.